Three hello, months. hello, hello, hi. are you there? Oh, hi, there you are. Welcome back. I think this is the next edition of Monday Night Live. Oh, man, I am excited. How you doing? I'm doing good. Hey, there's Cam from Romania. We already got almost 500 folks in the house. Guys, welcome back to the tribe. We're so glad to have you this Monday evening. At least it's Monday evening here in Tennessee, in the deep south of the United States. We got people watching from all over. Nisha's getting her stuff ready. So we're going to, for the next hour, we're going to answer as many of your questions as we possibly can. Uh, what do you got going on, Nisha? Keto Chow is going to add. Oh, we have an ad for Keto Chow. Excellent. Nice. Hey, Frank, we got a big question already. All right. Well, let's, let's go ahead with Frank. Dr. Barry, last week you said to take Lugol's one to two drops for my elevated thyroid globulin. Will this increase my levels or decrease overall thyroid levels? What it's going to do, Frank, is it's going to improve your thyroid function. And it's also going to improve the function of every other single cell in your body. Uh, if you want a lot more information about this and the research links that I use to make my video, there's an iodine video on YouTube that made by yours truly that explains this in much more detail. But without enough iodine in your body, your thyroid just can't function optimally. This is well known in medicine. Uh, before we get into it, if you're new, type new in the comment section and tell us hi. If this is your first live, yes, tell please. us that too. Uh, if you are new, we do this every Monday at 7 Central Standard Time. And we come and ask your uh, ask your questions. We come and answer your questions to the best of our ability. Yes. We can't answer every single question. <clears throat> it's impossible. It's impossible. impossible. What I want to know. We try really hard to get to every single one. We really do. We really do. And I'm going to tell you at the end of this video, if you've got specific questions you really need an answer to from me, I'm going to tell you how to get that done. But first, I want to know where you're watching from. What city, what state, what country, what continent, what planet are you on right now? Tell us in the comments so we can say howdy, because that's how we say it down here. Sometimes. <clears throat> we never say howdy, not one time. Rory has a really good question. Okay, let's go. If you're a newbie, you might have the same question. People keep telling me that too much red meat will cause cancer. They also say that being on keto is bad for the heart. Mm -hmm. Is the keto diet sustainable? Yeah, keto is 100% sustainable. It's delicious. It's nutrient dense. Uh, there is no research that shows that eating lots of fatty red meat either causes colon cancer or cancer in general or heart disease or any other thing. All of the research that these people are talking about is observational research, which at best can only show a possible association. There has never been a single research study that proved the, that red meat causes cancer or heart disease or heart failure or keto butt crack or carnivore um, funky lips. I don't know. I just I couldn't think of anything. So, yeah, no, it's all observational data that does not prove anything. Miss Claire wants to know, hey, from Australia. Hey, Miss Claire. I love beef jerky and pork crackling. And I was wondering, is it safe enough to snack on this daily? 100%. Yeah. Well, it depends also on the beef jerky. Some beef jerkies have a lot watch, of sugar yeah, in them. So the you just got to watch yep, the ingredients yep, yep, and the carb count. Yep. Most pork cracklings are okay, but there mm -hmm. are some that are in canola oil and soybean oil. Yep. So pick the better option if you can, but they are fairly safe for yep. daily consumption. And right now it's okay for you to snack on those. But what I'd like for you to ultimately do is include them in part of a discrete meal so that you're going to wind up eating one or two discrete meals a day. Uh, during that meal, you're going to eat until you're comfortable with stuff. And if you eat enough fat and protein in those meals, then you won't have any reason to be snacking. But it's okay for now. Justin, can a snake diet be potentially safe for me? I want to go 10 days just drinking the snake juice and salt water. Is this okay? Yeah, I don't think the snake diet <laughs> is in any way dangerous. Uh, I think uh, some of the things they talk about are unnecessary, but uh, I don't think it's dangerous in any way. Um, Oh, I see some people share this. You're always welcome to share this video with, with a specific person, or if you'd like to share it to a group on MeWe or even on Facebook, you're welcome to share this video wherever you think it'll do the most good. Keto butt crack, for the record, is not a real thing. He just made that up. Yeah. Crystal, your opinion on sugar substitutions like erythritol, allulose, monk fruit, stevia. I want low-carb options for Thanksgiving, etc. Okay. 
et cetera. Et cetera. Uh, so most of those are fine, but individually, some people can be more sensitive to those. They can have gut issues, bloating, gas, which you don't really want in the middle of your family mm -hmm. gathering, mm -hmm. right? Explosive gas. And you also don't want to give Not gas good. to your house guests either. Yeah. So uh, allulose for most people, fairly safe, um, doesn't cause as many gut problems. The sugar alcohols like erythritol mm -hmm. and xylitol, they tend to do it a little bit more, but, uh, for the most part, if you're just doing it for Thanksgiving, like they're all pretty good. Just don't go overboard. Absolutely. Robert says, is it safe to extend it fast for if you have under 20% body fat for 120 plus hours? As long as you're mining your fluid intake, your salt and your electrolytes and your minerals, I think it's perfectly fine to say for long, uh, to fast for longer periods of time. Once your body fat percentage gets low, get down close to normal. If you were fasting extended for weight loss benefits, then obviously you won't need that anymore. But if you're doing extended fast is to try to try to uh, potentiate autophagy or mitophagy, then, yeah, I think it's perfectly fine to fast for longer periods of time. Humans have done it for millions of years. It's, there's nothing dangerous about it. Hey, Miss Sherry. <clears throat> She says, as a thank you to both, I'm sponsoring five new subscribers to the $20 patron. Oh, that's amazing. That's awesome. That's awesome. You saved so many lives. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Sherry, Sherry thank for you the for support. That. Appreciate you. Uh, Randy says, what's keto butt crack? I already answered that. <laughs> Sorry, it's not really a thing. Keto butt crack is just as real as keto crotch. It's just as real as the cancer that red meat's going to cause. Keto butt crack is just as real as 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 the heart attack that meat's going to cause. All, Meaning it's not real, okay? Right, that was sarcasm. This is all bullshit that people make up to get clicks and to get eyeballs on their, their articles and to get attention. None of this is true. Human beings have been eating lots of fatty red meat for how long? A long time. There's no. It's It would be like telling human beings, oh, you know, breathing air will give you cancer of the rectum. What? We've always breathed there. We've always eaten meat. We've always drank water. We sleep every night. We play every day. That's what human beings do. You can't now say, oh, the sun will give you cancer. Uh, we've been playing in the sun for millions of years. Shut up. He's a little worked up tonight. Sue, thank you so much. Thank you, Soul Reaper. Love that name, Soul Reaper. Funny. <laughs> hey, did you guys know that Nisha Solace Hyphenberry is up? in the finals for Keto Influencer of the Year. And Dr. Barry is up for Channel of the Year. Oh, yeah. I forgot yeah. About that. yeah. If you guys want to go vote, you can vote as many times as you want to, um, as many times as you think we year. deserve. You can just Google Ketogenic Awards. It'll probably pop up. Keto-Weekly.com. That's where the, the voting process is going on. Slash awards. Slash awards. Yeah. Slash ketogenic dash awards but you can go vote for us if you want to if not that's fine too. yeah that's fine <laughs> if you want to you can vote for somebody else but whatever uh amy wants to know uh, i think she's having nausea and diarrhea with an all meat diet and she's been doing it for three weeks three weeks in uh, amy more than likely you've either got some gallbladder dysfunction or if you still have a gallbladder now if you don't have a gallbladder then that's probably why you're doing this as your liver ramps up its bile production, both its production and its storage capacity in the bile ducts. But if you still have a gallbladder, you either had some gallbladder sludge or some dysfunction, and you're basically making your gallbladder do lots of push-ups now and do the job it was meant to do because now you're eating enough fatty meat that it has to actually do its full-time job. Uh, after another week or two, the nausea, and probably you're having a little vague pain in the right upper side, that should get better and go completely away. Tired of looking for a name. Welcome back. <laughs> Dear Dr. Barry, is fat rendered during bone roasting for bone broth preparation safe for cooking later on? It is gold. Yes. Uh, thanks, Rory. Hey, my Holly. Thanks, Holly, for the super chat. St uh, Stockton guy. Down almost 40 pounds with just intermittent fasting and low carb. Now I feel like exercising again. Mm -hmm. Keep spreading the message. Good job, man. I love it. I was just made a video today about mm -hmm. intuitive eating. And that's one of the things I, I talked about is you don't have to exercise to lose weight if you're morbidly obese. What's going to happen is as you use a ketogenic diet, a carnivore diet, plus intermittent fasting, when you've lost enough fat, it's almost as if by magic, you're going to feel like, hey, I want to go outside and play. Let's go play. Then you'll be like, yeah, let's go. Cindy, thank you so much. Frank uh, wants to know, what are your thoughts on choline supplements? I got a YouTube video about this, Frank. 
eat your meat. That's all you got to worry about. Okay. Uh, Shelly, parathyroid andioma. Adenoma. <clears throat> yep. Confirmed by CT, calcium 11 with symptoms. Is surgery the only option to get calcium yeah. in normal yeah. You, range? Yeah, you got to have that adenoma and probably mm -hmm. the single parathyroid gland that contains the adenoma, you got to have that taken out. Uh, and this is why I'm always harping on you guys. If your calcium levels even one tenth of a point high on your labs, do not let your doctor uh, ignore that. Your parathyroid function has to be looked at because you can have uh, a, a parathyroid adenoma for years and your doctor miss it if they're ignoring that slightly elevated calcium. So I'm glad your doctor caught it. Hey, Ancestral Keto Coach, I see you with your bacon emojis. Uh, speaking of bacon emojis, if you haven't watched my video on my channel, Nisha loves it. Yes. Me and Dr. Barry did a video and showed how he cooks his bacon. It's a very, very <clears throat> precise method. And it makes what we call bacon chips. Uh, which is like what we like to have if we're wanting a snack for if we're having a movie night or something like that. The way we cook it makes it super, super crispy. It, no mess. It doesn't splatter everywhere. It's a really simple way to cook it. So go check out that video if you haven't already. Yeah. Zach? So, oh, but wait a minute. Now, what all do you have on your channel? Her handle is Nisha Loves It. She's got recipes, lifestyle. And I get questions all the time. Well, Dr. Barry, what do you eat in a day? Well, guess what? If you want to see exactly what I eat in a day, Nisha loves it. Okay. And she maybe even cooked it, but probably I cooked it, but I ate it and it's on her channel. I cook too. You do. That's true. Uh, Zach says, I'm a healthy 5'10", 165 pound man, but I have high blood pressure and it's a uh, familial. How long do I have to do straight carnivore in order to see it get down to a normal level? It didn't change after I did this for a month. So he has uh, familial uh, the high blood pressure. Hypertension. Yeah. So some people, it takes months for their blood pressure to come back down close to normal. Okay. Uh, some people, it never goes back to what the American Heart Association would say is a normal blood pressure. But virtually everybody, if they're on, say, two or three high doses of blood pressure medicines right now, after three to six months of carnivore, they're either going to be not needing any of that blood pressure medication anymore, or they're going to be on one low dose of one medication. And I consider both of those scenarios to be a great victory. Um, Kelly made the bacon chips, and you got star eyes and clapping hands. <laughs> you did. That was Ken's Oh, recipe. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Pearson says, I would love to have you come on in time and give the case for what the proper human diet is and why the nutrition industry isn't supporting it. You're one of the most articulate people I've heard on the topic. Thanks oh, for what you do. I you screenshot much. that. Anytime. Okay. I'll, I'll check into that. Um, send me an email. There should be an email in, in the show notes of all my YouTube videos. And hey, we'll Charles. Welcome back. Just got off two rounds of antibiotics due to bad tooth infection. Mm. Oh, sorry, man. I'm taking pre and probiotics and eating sauerkraut. How long should I do this to get my gut back on track? Yeah, probably a week or two. And if you if you really love sauerkraut, then two or three weeks. Hey, Viva. Thank you. All right. Uh, Nomad. Okay. Do you have Let something? me do Mimi. Mimi says, well, can I was we... going to say that too. Okay. <laughs> can, can we have corned, corned beef, beef on the Triple B E Challenge? So if you don't know what the Triple B E Challenge is, it's a 90-day challenge to eat only beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. You can eat as much as you want. You can eat one meal, two meals, three meals a day. No snacking in between, but you're going to eat until you're stuffed and you can't eat another bite. And uh, people are doing this. And if any of you guys are doing the Triple B Challenge, put in the, in the, in the uh, comments your progress and what you've noticed so far. Because a lot of people are interested in doing this, but they're a little spooky. Like, I don't know, I might die. Put in the comments that you haven't died and what benefits you've gotten so far from doing the Triple B Challenge. We're uh, running this challenge in the Patreon group. So yeah, yeah. most but, of the people, but there are other people doing it. In fact, two crazy ketos, they're doing it. Yeah. Their group is doing it too. So, But uh, Mimi, uh, real corned beef is almost always perfectly fine. But corned beef hash uh, that comes in a can has got potatoes in it. And I did not know that for a long time. You didn't? I just thought it was white beef. I didn't know what those little white things were. But yeah, they're potatoes. So corned beef, if it's done properly, then it's totally fine. 
Nomad says it's, I seem to have be headache sensitive to a lot of things. Caffeine, especially mm -hmm. if I'm mm -hmm. fasting, potassium seems to give me headache as well. Any tips? Yeah. Anytime you get that little tweaky headache, I would try a little extra shot of magnesium. A lot of times that'll make a headache, even a migraine headache, go completely away. Uh, that's just one thing to try. But uh, some people have a headache threshold that's much lower than everybody else. And so what might give me a bad headache, Nisha wouldn't even have a headache at all. And it's just a difference in people. It's that distribution curve. But might try the magnesium. Thank Thanks, you, Jenna. Jenna. That was a good question. Okay. Tree Tree. Hey, Tree Tree. Uh, she says, I have low thyroid and I'm on armor. Don't think I have Hashimoto's. Is there any reason I cannot be carnivore? Are you a human being, Tree Tree? If the answer is yes, as I suspect it is, then you can eat a proper human diet, which is a spectrum that ranges all the way from as close to zero carb as you can get, which is a carnivore diet, all the way over to a veg heavy, low carb diet with lots of meat and eggs and seafood, which might be 50 total grams a day. Anywhere in here, as long as you're eating real whole food, you can do that because you're a human being and we love you. Jeff. Been keto for five weeks and I still have fatigue. Brain fog, electrolytes are good. Should I go carnivore or give it a bit more time? I've heard people have more success with carnivore. Yeah. Give it some time. Give it some time and add, eat more salt. I bet money you're not salting your food enough. Uh, Very yeah. often that'll make you foggy and draggy and almost uh, worse than fatigue, almost kind of down in the dumps. It yeah. does that to me. Five grams of salt At is least. what you need to aim for, especially yep. in the beginning. Five grams of sodium. Sodium, yeah. that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, so really, if you salt to taste and really go to the upper limit of your taste, not to the point where it's like, oh, that's so salty, but just to where it's like, mm, that's really salty. That's what you're looking for. That, that was made good, me right? Really uncomfortable. <laughs> Christy, thank you so much. Uh, she is a new member in our Patreon group. Thank you, Christy. Love Welcome it. to the tribe. Love it so much. We have a really good time over there. It's yeah, a little yeah. less uh, filtered. Yeah. <laughs> Not that we're really that filtered, anyways, but it's even more, even less filtered. Hey, Susan. Hey, from Texas. I want to do the triple BE. Any tips for me? We raise beef cattle. Which cut do you think is the best to get protein and fat ratio right? Thank mm. you for everything you do. Beef ribs. Um, Ribeye, rib any fatty cut of meat. So basically, since you have your own cattle, you either butcher or you, you're buddies with the guy who does the butchering. Tell the butcher, tell the meat processor, if you trim the fat off my meat, you will not get a Christmas card this year. OK, and when you sit when you tell them that don't trim the fat because most butchers trim the fat because people want a quarter inch or they want an eighth of an inch. You're like, if you want to be my friend. Do not trim the fat, then you're going to get much closer to the one to one ratio of fat to protein that human beings seem to excel on. We love one to one. Robert says, Thanks for being one of the rare authorities who refuses to lie to make a living. Science and medicine have set themselves back 50 years in the yeah, past few really years. Have. We're trying to stay positive. Yeah, stay positive, man. It's a hard yeah, thing to do yeah. these but days. But Robert's exactly right. I predict that 50 years from now, some of the dumb stuff that doctors say now that I talk about in my book, Lies My Doctor Told Me, will be used as case studies to teach medical students, assuming that doctors are still human in 50 years. They may be AI or robots. I don't know. But they're going to use the cholesterol, the heart, the, the diet heart hypothesis as this is why how you don't do research, and this is how you don't make medical decisions. That's literally going to happen 20, 30, 50 years from now. And so our best thing to do is to, is to form a community where we can share our stories in the comments and say, look, I know the American Heart Association says this, but I'm telling you, I had heart failure. I started eating lots of fatty beef, and, with, and I salted it very well, and my heart failure is better now than when I was eating the AHA diet. That's the kind of stuff we're going to have to do. We're going to have to support each other and take care of each other until modern medicine holds a press conference and apologizes and says, we're going to try to do better. And then maybe we can reach out and teach them how to do it. Julie's world. world. Julie's, Julie's world. world. Get it? I've been carnivore for 40 days. My MS symptoms are worse. Can you give me an idea as to why? As you know, uh, Julie? Is that right? Julie. Julie, MS symptoms fluctuate. Okay. So it could be completely coincidental that you're going through a flare right now. 
Uh, some people believe that when you stop a standard American diet and go carnivore, that there, there is some toxin release, perhaps some stored toxins. I haven't seen a lot of research supporting that, but a lot of people report that they have oxalate dump, dumping or other things like that. If that's the case, in your case, then that could be causing you to feel worse temporarily. Glenn, 53, woman, 115 pounds, myasthenia gravis, A1C 4.9, fasting insulin 1.7, T4 6.2, T3 26, free thyroid index 1.6, TPO is less than nine, C-reactive protein less than one, been ketovore five months, um, continue to get worse. What's getting worse? Yeah, I was going to say those look really good. Uh, maybe your myasthenia gravis mm -hmm. is getting, maybe that's what you mean, your symptoms, but your numbers are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful numbers. Uh, myasthenia gravis in some cases is, is quite chronic and progressive and it can get worse quickly. Um, work with your doctor, keep doing your own research and, and keep learning, keep studying, keep reading, keep watching videos. Uh, in some cases, uh, chronic diseases, you're stuck with it. And I hope that's not the case for you. I would not lose all hope, but I would keep learning, keep researching. Um, Frank says Norvask five milligrams, uh, Every night at bedtime or with malacinopril in the morning. I, I take the Norvask at uh, bedtime. It's a calcium channel blocker. Sometimes they can cause edema if you take them in the morning. Uh, and so until you've lowered your carbs enough that you can just get off the Norvask, I would take it at bedtime. Tracy, my eye doctor said I have the beginnings of cataract and I will need eye surgery in eight to 10 years. Is there a way yeah. to prevent them from getting worse? Yeah. So cataracts, I've got a YouTube video about cataracts that you can check out but they're basically caused by glycating the proteins in, your, in the lens of your eye. The lens of your eye doesn't have a good blood supply, so it can't clean itself. And then once those proteins are glycated, it takes a long damn time to replace those proteins. And so you've got to cut the carbs drastically, eat a very, very low carbohydrate, keto, ketovore, carnivore diet. And I'm not, I'm not saying you'll necessarily be able to reverse that, although I will think it, it will get slowly better over weeks and year, uh, months and years, but it's going to stop getting worse, which if you're honest with yourself, that's what you really want is to stop the progression. Adlin says, I started triple BE on October 5th. I'm eating once, sometimes only twice a day. I'm rarely hungry and I've lost 3.4 pounds in this short amount of time. I feel amazing. Good for you. So in six days. Love it. Love it. That's probably mostly water, but that's okay. Allie, my mother-in-law has congestive heart failure. Her doctor has her off of sodium and she hates it. Yep. Is sodium bad for her condition and is a, a keto diet okay for her? Yep. I've got a YouTube video about salt and heart, heart disease. Absolutely. The research shows that heart failure patients get worse quicker when you put them on a no salt diet. You definitely, if you love your mother-in-law, you need to buy a book called The Salt Fix by Dr. James D. Nicolantonio. He's a PhD researcher. Uh, he works, among other places, at the Mayo Clinic. He wrote a book about, about salt, and in it, he has a chapter about congestive heart failure and how a very, very low salt diet can actually make you get worse quicker. Kizzy says, what is it about eggs that people say, if you have Hashimoto's, you shouldn't eat them? Yeah, no damn idea. People will say the dumbest either. stuff. But okay, so I will say though, there is a significant difference between the eggs that you buy at the grocery that are from the chicken factory and a free range, pastured, mm -hmm. cage free mm -hmm. chicken egg. There's <clears> a lot of difference. And for some people that are even sensitive to eggs, if they eat a quality pastured, cage free egg, mm -hmm. They don't even see any side effects. So I think it has a lot more to do with the quality of the egg and the chicken's life yep. than actual eggs yep. themselves. I Would totally you agree. agree with that? Yeah, I totally agree with that. How many of you guys are starting to take charge of your food power? How many of you guys have got a few chickens, a few quail, maybe a sheep or two? Uh, what's, that, what's that from? You know? Yes. Beowulf. Beowulf, that's right. <laughs> or you got a cow. How? What do you got and how many do you got? Tell me in the comments. I want to see who's getting prepared to take care of their own food needs. You can just have a few chickens. Yeah. And, and, and they are two grown girls. They give us about four eggs a day. And our little ones, they're fixing to start laying because one of them laid an egg. Like, okay. Yep. So little. I thought maybe it was a wind egg. Does anybody know what a wind egg is? And just the other day, we got our first double yolk, double yolk egg, yeah. which we were very proud of. And I'm sure the girl was proud that laid it. 
uh, and I ate it, and it was delicious. But, uh, oh, Joseph's got 400 chickens. Dude. Whoa. That's the way to do That's it impressive. right there. We've got like 30. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys, even if, you, if you've got a cockatiel in your tiny apartment, sell the cockatiel on eBay and buy two or three Coternix quail. They'll each one lay you a little quail egg every day. They're as cute as they can be. They're funny. They're fun. They're not loud. They don't really stink if you change the cage like you would the cockatiel. And you get three little quail eggs every day in your tiny apartment. Obviously, it's the best if they're outside. But... Not Coternix quail. Oh, quail. Yeah, quail, quail. Quail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They've been in captivity for a thousand years. They'd rather be in the cage. Chris wants to know, I watched a YouTube video uh, and the guy was saying that APOE testing is a must because there are some people who who keto may not be good for and suggested vitamin K supplements and vitamin D and a few others. Is this necessary? Yeah, so you definitely need to make sure you're getting enough vitamin K2 and enough vitamin D3, but you can do that by eating real foods. I've got YouTube videos about both those vitamins on this channel. Uh, that extra amount of testing, there is no human being on the planet that cannot eat a proper human diet. That's why we named it that. It's because if you are a human, you can eat a low-carb, keto, ketovore, carnivore diet. It is not only safe, it is the best diet where you're going to reach your optimal health. But everybody's trying to make a buck, guys, because times are tight, right? So if I can promote this test and get an affiliate link, or if I can do this and get this little fee, that's, if that's your business model, then you've got to find problems. You got to make things complicated, right? You, you know, and I try to make things simple. It's like, yeah, you don't need any of that shit. Just do this and you'll be fine. But a lot of people like to complicate things. And then they can say, oh, if you're confused now, then you can sign up for my course. Yeah. Rod, hey, Rod, this is a great question. He says, thanks, Doc and Nisha. Does smart insulin, such as Victoza, have the same fat storing properties as regular insulin, such as yeah. lantern. Yeah, who told you Victoza was smart? smart insulin. Did That's they good say marketing. that in the commercial? That is good marketing. Because if they say that in the commercial, I need you to send me a link to that commercial. I will make a YouTube video and dog their it's ass. It's smart. It's smart. Insulin. Like a smartphone, but smart right. insulin. Our insulin has AI. I mean, the marketing person that came oh, up with that no. yeah. definitely got it right. Victoza makes, makes it, just like any other insulin, makes it impossible for you to store fat. Any medication like Victoza that raises your insulin level is going to turn off your ability to burn fat. That's one of the jobs that insulin has when it's too high. Just plain keto. Says, I'm six weeks keto, lost 35 pounds. Booyah! Uh, had some mad foot cramps last night, took pickle juice. How can I get enough potassium without just relying on supplements? Mm, I've got a YouTube video about potassium-rich foods. Uh, we also love Keto Chow's Daily Mineral Drops. It's got all the magnesium, They're potassium. They're the best thing for a cramp ever. Yeah, and Misha, what, a couple of times over the last six months, she would have a leg cramp or a headache. They're disgusting, okay? but They are they, not. They're salty. No, they're, they're just salty. They're disgusting. But they will kick that cramp in seconds. Yeah, Second. Yeah. So, so that's so happened twice to her in six months. Squirt it in your mouth, take a shot of water. Yeah, I don't. I I never have cramps, but every now and then she'll have a little cramp. I well, don't know why. I think a lot of it was when I was breastfeeding. I was just constantly dehydrated, mm. even though I was drinking a lot of electrolytes. True, true. Our Sultan, hello from Saudi Arabia. Hey, Sultan. Hello. I eat one big meal a day. Oh no, one big meal every forty-eight or even seventy-two hours. Is that okay? Is that healthy? I've been keto for more than a year. I've lost almost half of my body weight, but still have some fat to lose. P.S. No hunger whatsoever yeah. during these fasts. You guys hear that? Think about that. This guy eats once every other day, and he's still got some fat to lose. So as long as he's minding his minerals and electrolytes and salt intake and getting plenty of fluids, perfectly safe for him to eat one meal every other day. Also perfectly ancestrally appropriate because I guarantee you 100,000 years ago, we would do that. We would eat every other day because that I'm, I'm such a bad caveman that I didn't kill anything today. So we didn't eat till tomorrow. The caveman thing, man. This I beard would, makes me feel more like a caveman. Oh, yeah. You're super caveman with right? your iPhone. Okay, <laughs> listen. I want you guys to pay attention to what the Sultan said. All right, He said he wasn't hungry. Not hungry. He wasn't hungry. He wasn't forcing himself to go without food. He wasn't hungry. He was comfortable. He felt good. Mm -hmm. So he kept fasting until he felt like he needed sustenance. So just pay attention to what he said, too. Yep. Right? He and wasn't I, go ahead. miserable. I bet you money that when Sultan eats his one meal every other day, 
he doesn't eat a palm-sized portion of meat. He said a large trims meal. The fat. Yes. He eats like a lion. He eats until he can't eat another bite and pushes away from the table like, oh, that's it, I'm done. That's how you do it. That's how you're supposed to eat if you're a human being. Caboodle. Caboodle. Uh, a little over two years, keto A1C came down to 6.3 from 9.1. My latest A1C went up a little to 6.4, and my triglycerides went up to 187. What are your thoughts about yeah. adding? It went away. He uh, wants to do triple B. Yeah, definitely. And so the solution to lowering your A1C back to normal and to lowering your triglycerides to normal is to cut whatever your current carbohydrate intake is a day. You got to cut that in half. Or you could just go triple B and E, which is as close to zero carb as you can get. That's going to do it too. Anna says, I'm 29 years old and just starting Ketobore. Hey, Anna. Week one felt great, even with some keto flu symptoms. I'm excited to continue and see how much better I can feel. I have over 100 pounds to lose. Sounds like <clears> you're <throat> on the right path. Good job, now, Anna. Anna, you're probably going to have some unintended side effects. You, if you got over 100 pounds to lose, the side effects are going to include you're going to have to buy a whole new wardrobe. You may have to buy new shoes because your old shoes will be too big. You may have to have your ring resized because it'll be falling off your finger. Uh, you, If you wear eyeglasses currently, you may have to go get new prescriptions because your current prescriptions will be too strong. I uh, just wanted to, full disclosure, I wanted you to know there might be some possible side effects to eating keto. Sandy says, I've been keto for two years. I had some hair loss in the beginning, but it stopped and it regrew. I'm now keto for and my hair is falling out in handfuls. I'm worried. Okay, so did you drop your calories? Because when you, you increase did. your protein, sometimes you're not getting the calories in that you used to. Yep. So I don't promote tracking, but if your hair is falling out, then you need to know, are you eating enough? Yep. And if you're not, then you need to bump that fat for, uh, macro up to yep. help you get your calories in. And then also, uh, depending on what, age you are you may need to have your hormones checked as well because yep. it could have something to do with hormones yep the ketovore and carnivore diets are so satiating with all the fat and protein that very often especially it seems like women usually mm -hmm. just won't eat enough and so you've got to really push it i don't i don't say eat until you're full eat until you're stuffed comfortably stuffed i don't want you you know like it being in abdominal pain that's such a vague thing you i know, know i know well, i've got to like, think of a better know what that means. i mean you got to eat until you're stuffed oh my god my belly's gonna when pop. you feel full if you are having issues like she was having yeah. the crab falling out eat your full and then eat a few more bites yeah yeah that's a good i like that that's good i don't know how else to say it frank wants to know do i need keto chow and Lugol's or one of the other. Mm -mm. So if you haven't been replacing your iodine with anything, then watch my YouTube video about iodine rich food. Start eating one or two of those a week. Use a bottle of Lugol's and use one drop or two drops each day in your coffee or liquid. Then when you've done that, then you can get the, the daily minerals because that has iodine in it, about 500 micrograms a day. And you've, you've already repleted your iodine stores in every cell in your body and in your bones, then this is going to keep you optimal. But uh, this, if you're severely depleted, just the daily minerals may not have enough iodine to replete you or fill your cells back up. But once you're repleted, this has got enough to maintain you for the rest of your life. Um, There's a link down in the show notes for the drops if anybody wants to just check it out. Tony, the smart, oh gosh, well, I'll read that too. The smartest pair by far on YouTube. Thank oh, you, Tony. Tony. Uh, that's not what I meant to say, but Sandy. Okay. Sandy has a good question. Please give advice on severe anxiety and depression. What are the good supplements? Yeah. So <clears throat> the best supplement, and don't think I'm being sarcastic or obtuse, but the best supplement for you is omega-3 rich seafood, fatty fish, cold water fish, and fatty red meat and egg yolks. Literally, that needs they need to be in every meal of your diet, and you need to drastically cut your carbohydrate intake. Those things alone, a lot of people are able to wean down and get off their antidepressants. Fat is super important if you have mental yes. um, disorders or history of mental illness. Fat is important. Yep. Uh, Georgia E, Dr. Georgia E, go She's find a psychiatrist. her. She promotes this to her patients and her clients, and you you should go follow her because she's a wonderful source she of is, information. Absolutely. Lindsay says best things to eat leading up to to and after a C section to promote healing. Yeah, lots of meat, lots of eggs, uh, lots <clears> of seafood, 
lots of shellfish, all that stuff. I would say, yeah, I hope that you have a family support system that can bring you in good food because once you yes. have that section, you're, you're going to be yeah. laid in the yeah. bed for at least a few hours yeah. and they're going to bring you a tray yeah. and it's going to have a lot of crap yeah. on it. And, you know, it's fine. Do, do what you want. But if you want to have other options, have a family member that's going to be able, I don't know what the restrictions are for visitation. You may need to even meal plan and take food with you. If you are wanting to stay mm -hmm. on, on a whole food, you know, no additives, crappy yeah. hospital food <clears throat> type of way of eating. Have all you guys seen the reversed docu-series? It's uh, an eight or nine part docu-series about reversing type two diabetes, not just, managing it or improving it, but completely reversing it, getting rid of it with a ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting. There's a link down in the show notes to a network called yourhealthnetwork.com. I'm actually in it. I don't know how in the heck I pulled that off, but they flew me to Costa Rica and we made a docuseries and me and Dr. Jason Fung, who's a kidney specialist and Maria Emmerich, we taught four house guests how to reverse prediabetes and to reverse type two diabetes and lose a lot of weight in the process. So check that out. If you, if you're looking for a show to watch, there's eight or nine episodes right there. Lynette wants to know why Nisha looks so aggravated when Dr. Barry gets long winded. Well, yeah, Lynette, I would like to know that too. It's because all the people who ask questions get mad when I don't get to their question and somehow it's my fault and they get mad at me. Hurts my feelings. But really, I can't answer all of them or get to them because he likes to be long winded. See how she flipped that on me? Did so you say that? I get all people get mad at me. Yeah. No one gets mad at me. They're like, that Nisha. <laughs> But you, you would not believe how many questions we're behind right now, okay? <laughs> Mr. John says, I'm a male, 62 years old, 5'8", 165 pounds, creatinine level at 1.15. How do I lower it? Mm. I drink two quarts of beer every other day. Should okay. I quit alcohol? Should I do keto? And what other advice yeah, do you so have? So number one, uh, Mr. John, you're a grown man. Beers for college kids and teenagers. Stop drinking beer. It is bad for your kidneys. Okay. Number two, if you smoke, also, Mr. John, quit smoking. Uh, you may not smoke. I hope not. But then the third thing is you absolutely need to slash your carbohydrate intake. Eat either a ketogenic diet, a ketovore, or a carnivore diet. That's how you're not only going to protect your remaining kidney function, but we've seen thousands of people who actually improved their kidney function, improved their GFR, improve their creatinine, you probably have uh, stage one CKD right now, stage one chronic kidney disease. I've seen hundreds and hundreds of people reverse that back to normal with keto, ketoboy, carnivore, and stop the damn beer, okay? Stop all alcohol. What are you doing? Beer. Hmm. Brooke, what is the lowest and healthiest hemoglobin A1C I should shoot for? I just bought bio coaches at home test and mine was 4.9. Mm -hmm. My husband's was five. Yeah, that's a great question. For a few years, uh, a while back, the American Diabetes Association was trying to imply that you could have a, a, an A1C that was too low to be actually worrisome and dangerous. That's total horse crap. The lower it is, the better. There's never been a single research study that found a, any, any increasing mortality or morbidity with a very low, I'm talking about 4.5, 4.3. What the A1C measures is how much the hemoglobin in your red blood cells is glycated, which means it has sugar stuck to it, okay? So just imagine if you poured molasses and just covered my entire naked body with molasses, that's how your hemoglobin, now, now imagine me trying to do my job and make a YouTube video and check my phone. It would just be a freaking mess, right? I couldn't do anything productively. That's how the hemoglobin in your red blood cells are when it's too glycated. So the less glycated it is, the better. Now, you're never going to get a zero A1C. That, that might actually be weird and worrisome. But even in the low fours, it's absolutely the lower your A1C, the healthier you are. Congratulations. Um, everyone's saying the link to the reverse series is not working. What? Can you look at it on that end? No. Yeah, you clicked that. I, right can't, I can't lose my spot. Oh, I see. It'll make you lose it. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I'll fix it as soon as this is over. I thought it was working. Jean Sebastian, welcome back. I need to lose 80 pounds. It is a 500 calories per day protein sparing modified fast a good thing in your opinion? Yeah, I don't recommend protein sparing modified fast for <clears throat> anybody. Um, I think it's completely and totally unnecessary. 
uh, when protein sparing modified fast first came out back in the 70s or 80s. It's this is not a new ago. thing. This yeah. has been around forever. Uh, it was under strict doctor supervision because it, if, if not done properly and with uh, strict monitoring and blood work, you can have <laughs> electrolyte problems. You can have other problems. I don't recommend it at all. You just need to eat a very, very low carbohydrate, keto, ketovore, carnivore diet, and you're going to lose your 80 pounds. <coughs> Excuse me. Miss Jane. Hey, Miss Jane. Thank you for all you do. Love soaking up all the information. Thank oh, you, thank Jane. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, I have a carnivore rash. I have a relative who was carnivore for a few. Oh, carnivore rash. He doesn't have it, but a relative who was carnivore for a few weeks began getting a rash, which he alleviated by resuming some mm -hmm. carbs. Yeah, some few people will have this, this short term rash that lasts for a few days or a week or two. It's not dangerous. It's nothing to worry about. It is uh, short lived, it's temporary. It goes away. It, this is, could be the oxalate dumping. This could be some toxin coming out. We're not sure what causes it, but we do are sure that it's short term and in no way concerning carnivore on. Hey, Granny Berry's watching. Hey, Granny. Granny Berry in Alabama's watching the YouTube mm -hmm. machine. Joe, any advice for staying keto on the road? I'm a seasonal pilot that keeps me working away all mm -hmm. summer for 12 to 16 hours a day. I can't seem to get off the roller coaster of losing weight all winter and then gaining it back in the summer. Yeah. Get an igloo cooler, <clears throat> some kind of little cooler. If you don't have access to a fridge at work and keep it full of meat and it can literally be hot dogs and bologna and, and sausage and ground beef. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Uh, today, Nisha took two pounds of ground beef and chopped it up into like two inch I it's, tried to make meat bars, which Kelly Hogan does it, and Little Bit Fit Girl does it. Yeah. Like, there's several carnivores who do it. I've never done it before, but y'all kept telling me I needed to try it, so I did it. It's freaking amazing. It's good. It's and you could literally put that in a zip. You could put five pounds of meat chopped up in those little strips, season it up good, cook it, put it in your Ziploc, put it in your igloo, boom, you're done. That's all you need. Danita says, Nisha, I adore you. All oh, thanks. So do I. Thanks, she the, Danita. She's the stuff, right? I love you back. I had a couple of spicy pickled <clears throat> eggs that were okay today and thought about you. Yeah. If you eat mm. or make those, do you have a recipe to share? I'm working on it. I want to do them with the quail eggs. Like we have quail now and they have the tiny any day, eggs. Any day we should have an egg. And they're perfect for pickling. So I'll be posting that recipe. Yeah. Any day we should have an egg. You think? No, it's, yeah, they're about six weeks old Woo now. So it's about time to Fantastic. start having quail eggs. All right. Crown of curls. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Uh, insomnia has increased while carnivore up about six hours per night. Obviously my energy levels are on empty during the day. Any supplement suggestions? Yeah, <laughs> this happens sometimes temporarily for people. And sometimes they don't even have the fatigue during the day. They have perfect energy during the day, but they're just not sleeping as much at night. Uh, but in your case, you're having the fatigue. You might want to try some magnesium, an extra dose of magnesium at bedtime. You might want to try how old is Crown of Curls? Like 25? Uh, she's, I think she's about my age, like about late 20, 20s, 25, or late 30s. 30. So maybe three milligrams of melatonin. Try that. Maybe try some GABA, G-A-B-A. -A. For some people, that works great. Any herb, herbs or, or essential oils? Valerian that, root. Valerian root. Yeah, it something like that. It smells awful, but it works. Yeah, and I think plants make great medication like that and, and, yeah. and, and like treatments. So uh, maybe try a few of those and see if you can find something. But I would predict Crown of Curls 82. She was born in 82. So how old is she? Oh, so she's a little bit older than me. So she's about the same age. Okay. Me. But I predict this is short term is going to go away. She hangs out with me over on my channel. Sweet. Those of you, I know who you are. When I see Sweet. you, I know that you hang out with me too. And that's why I look. Uh, booty, booty sauce. Booty sauce. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat, booty sauce. I think I think that's maybe one of the best names we've seen. All right. Venger. It could be good or bad, really. Oh, my God. Triple B-E, is that all I can eat if I go on that challenge? Yes, that's the point. That's the challenge. Um, I've lost 100 pounds on keto. Well done, but I've stalled. I want to step it up. I'm 58 years old. Stepping it up would be the triple B-E. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, that's it. You don't have to do it forever. Right. Do it's it for just, 90 days. 90 days. You don't even have to do it for 90 days. 30 yeah, days is yeah, good. Yeah. Or 60. Flower Bomb says, it's TMI, but how do I prevent hard stool on keto and carnivore? I don't have constipation. It's just a little bit mm -hmm. difficult. You're going to increase your magnesium, and you're going to increase your salt, and you're going to eat more fat. You're going to bump up the fat. So if you're cooking meat, you're going to cook it in bacon grease, cook it in butter. Those three things alone are going to make everything slide through. Hey, Serena. She says, I'm your indie stalker. Oh, nice. <laughs> stalker from Indy. 
Uh, we have oh Colorado bird nerd. We have Coternix jumbo quail, and we we bought sixty fertilized eggs and we hatched out thirteen or fourteen. We did something. They wrong. said the first time you you're not going to get you know even fifty percent, and then we lost a couple along the way. So we've got I think eleven birds, and it looks like they're all little uh, hens, but I'm not hundred percent sure. What do they call a rooster? It's a rooster. I think it's a rooster. Maybe a cock. I don't know but it's definitely a rooster. Uh, but I don't think we have one, but I'm not an expert on sexing quail yet. You, you can to... you can look at their vent eventually and tell, but I am not a quail gynecologist, so I don't know if that's, I don't know. I think I think they're hens, but it's coterminous. Thanks, Orland. Was that too much? Yeah, a little. Um, uh, McCullen, would keto help Parkinson's disease? Any of the neurological disorders from Parkinson's, any of the dementias, Alzheimer's, especially uh, any of those guys are you're going to slow down the progression and you're going to lessen the symptoms by eating a proper human diet. You're not going to cure it. It's probably already too late for that. But what you can do in some cases, stop the progression in its tracks. It just stops right there. Some few people report an improvement in symptoms. But overall, we hear that uh, it, it slowed down. It's basically like you hit the pause button on the Huntington's and they, they're just staying right where they're at right now. They're not losing more function. Um, KT Do says, I have type 2 diabetes. I've been on carnivore seven days. But my sugar isn't dropping at all. It's still around 160. Mm. What do you say? Give it time. Give it time. Mm. Your body has been metabolically unwell for perhaps decades. It's going to take more than a week or two. For, for this to do its job. Your body has to have time to heal. It has to have all the right nutrition to heal. You've got the nutrition covered. Now you just got to have some patience grasshopping and it, it will, it will heal. I promise. Hey, Dolores. Thank you so much. Hey, Steve. Steve wants to say, um, he says I'm 67, but I feel like a teenager. Thanks for both. Of, uh, thanks to you. Sorry, Becca's coming in here. I'm distracted. Thanks to you too. So I'll keep enjoying my beer. <laughs> It's only one. Thanks, it's the Steve. only carbs I get. You, you know, Steve. Steve, you're a grown man. Yeah. You do what you yeah. want to do. Yeah. You know? We still love you. Come here, Beckett. Say hi to Granny Berry. Nope. Yep. He's going to be difficult, That's Granny. Okay. I don't know what's We don't going make to him do it. He gets to do it when he wants to. Hey, two crazy ketos in the house. If you hey. don't know who two crazy ketos are, Joe and Rachel, yes. they're amazing. If you're not over there on their channel, you, what are you doing? Yes. Go, go now. They're both hilarious. They're both following, currently following the Triple, triple B. B. Uh, usually keto, trying a 90-day carnivore challenge right now. Rachel is beautiful. Joe ain't bad looking himself. You guys need to follow two crazy ketos, 100%. They're real life people sharing their journey in a hilarious way, and we love them so much. Hey, there's Paola. She says she loves you, Nisha, but I she didn't you, mention Paola. me, Paola. You get most of the love anyways. Whatever. I, I need a little Fine, power. Hey, Miss Karen. She says, digestive issues, low acid reflux. After being clean carnivore for six months, uh, better after two months, but still lingering a yep. little bit. Um, could uh, electrolytes be the main reason? Yeah. You, if you're not getting enough magnesium and potassium, if you're not getting enough sodium uh, and, and chloride, because your stomach acid is made, hydrogen uh, it's made. Okay. So what it's hydrochloric acid, hydrochloric. So salt is one of the main building blocks of the acid in your stomach. Get more salt, give it time. Now you may have something like a hiatal hernia that's not been diagnosed and you may always have a touch of reflux, but it should get much, much better eating a proper human diet. Two Crazy Ketos wanted to share their 22 days into the triple BE diet. It's the most regular they've ever been in the bathroom. It's kind of miraculous what eating a proper human diet will do to your BM. By the way, it's two crazy with a K Ketos. Crazy with a K. Yep. All one word. Yep. Two Crazy yep. Ketos. Go show them some love. They deserve it. Uh, oh, wait, somebody's get, getting me off the hook here. Sally says, quail are difficult to hatch. We've never had luck with hatching more than about a third of ours. Good to know. So I feel better now. Yeah, me too. I, I don't feel like a quail murderer now. Karen, started and stopped carnivore multiple times due to nausea or hitting the wall. I use trace mineral drops and ginger chews help, but they are too sugary. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Get real ginger root and slice it up in very thin slices. And when you're feeling that nausea, put a slice of ginger root on your tongue. For a lot of people, that helps like magic. Hey, Henson. Hey, Henson. Thank you. And Henson. Derek. 
I'm a diabetic type two. I started carnivore. How long will it take to get off uh, to get rid of my diabetic gut? I'm six foot and 193, so I'm not fat. Just uh, what you got? Gut. Oh, you the oh, pumpkin seeds. They roasted pumpkin Becky seeds. Becky parked a pumpkin her. today at Lovey's house, and he brought me his pumpkin. Oh, can I eat it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you. Funny, funny story for you. Until I started dating Nisha. When I eat pumpkin seeds, I always crack the shell and took the kernel out. I never in my life had eaten the shell, the hull. And I saw her do that, that and I was ago. like, yeah, I was like, did you just eat the hull? And she's like, duh, everybody does. I'm like, I, I didn't know that. When you bake them right, they're just crispy. I would still, I would, I would suck all the spice off and then crack the shell and get the kernel. Like, I don't know. I didn't know. Nobody taught me that. Now you know. Now I know. Oh, go we'll back to, I don't think, uh, yeah, that. I didn't help Derek. Sorry, Derek. So it's going to take a while, okay? You didn't tell me your age. That would have helped me a little bit. Uh, what's he look, like 40-ish? I don't want to assume. It's hard to tell, Derek, what your age is. But it's going to take somewhere between three months and three years, depending. But it took you decades to build that gut. Here in the South, we call that a shed. I'm not going to explain what that means. But... but it's going to take a while. Your body's got to heal metabolically. You've got to eat low, low, low carbs so that you can lower your insulin back to low normal. If you're taking any diabetic medications that work by raising your insulin, they're going to slow you down. So talk to your doctor about getting you off those and just on the glucophage or metformin only. And then you're going to eat super low carb. And every day you're going to burn a little bit of that diabetes gut off. And before long, you're going to have to buy new pants. And I'm sorry. And also, you're welcome. Rose wants to know what you think of Dr. Gundy's one tablespoon a day of olive oil. She's been having dizziness and nausea, feeling every day like that for almost two years and lingering vertigo. The doctors say this will help. I doubt seriously that'll help, but I'm not opposed to it. Give it a try. Um, tablespoon a day and make sure the olive oil is real olive oil. If you buy a cheap brand, it's almost 90% likely to have been cut with canola oil or soybean oil. So buy a very reputable brand and uh, keep it in a dark place because it oxidizes very easily. Uh, Sean's back. I eat three meals a day in a 12-hour window. If I only eat keto on two of those three meals, will I still see benefits or is it all or nothing with keto? Yeah, you will see benefits, mm -hmm. but they'll be less than if you went 100% keto. But yeah, it'll just be a slower progress. Candace says, I suffer from CPTSD and PTSD, medication-resistant depression. I've been on and off of keto, lots of inflammation, started fasting four days ago. Um, past ED? I don't know. I don't know what that... You need is. to go follow Dr. Georgia E, too, <clears throat> yeah, Dr. all right? Georgia E, E-D-E. -E. -D -E. She is a psychiatrist, and she talks about this sort of thing all the time, but I'm just telling you... Carnivore is gonna it's gonna help your your PTSD at least to some degree. I've had uh, Vietnam and uh, Middle East vets say, "Man, since I've been carnivore, my PTSD is so much better. My nightmares are better." Heard that a bunch of times. Uh, Smedley <coughs> went ahead and told everybody what the shed meant. So. Smedley, this could, is a family show. Could lack of iodine cause cravings? Kyle wants to know if you're deficient in any. Uh, <clears throat> mineral, it can cause cravings. And so that's why we did the daily mineral drops is because when, when you're mining your minerals, you're going to be much less likely to have cravings. Now, there are other things that cause cravings too, but being deficient in a mineral, including iodine, can increase your risk of having just weird cravings. Amanda says, can super low stop <clears throat> fat or weight loss like an ice sparkling water? Amanda, for some people, maybe, maybe it could. Um, there's probably more than just that <clears throat> that's holding you back. You could not be sleeping well. You could be stressed out. There yep. could be a, a hundred things. hundred things. Yeah. Yep. But that could but be it one could of be yeah. one of the things. So yep. the only way to know is stop drinking it and yep. see how it goes. Yep. Derek said he's 42 and he's been type two for five years. So yeah, from, from three months to a year, Derek, of good, strict, super low carb keto, ketovore carnivore, and you can probably wave bye-bye to your diabetic gut. All right, let's see. Yeah, almost 3,000 in the <clears throat> chat tonight. Hey now. Thank you guys. Uh, Marcel says, oh my goodness, I craved and ate liver three times this week. No other food changes 
but blood sugar decreased 25 to 30 on my morning fasting measurements. Yeah, liver, liver's a magical superfood, guys. I keep telling you this, and you, you uh, like some of you, like somebody, refuses to eat the liver. I I'm eat just telling liver. you. Okay, good. Eat your chicken liver. I tried to get her to eat some cod liver the other day. Nothing. But she didn't want it. It's like, okay. Mm. Whatever. I'm fine. Life goes on. I'm good. Last time I checked, I wasn't a caveman. So. Ellen says, or Eileen, my 22-year-old son has been keto for eight months and has lost 25 pounds, and Beautiful. he does not want to lose any more. What's the best way for him to transition to higher carb? Are you ready for me to say it? Keto is not a weight loss diet. If you are overweight, it will tend to make you lose weight. If you're underweight, it will tend to make you gain weight. If you're at your ideal body weight, then your body is not an idiot. Neither is your son's body. It will maintain its ideal body weight. It'll maintain an ideal body fat percentage. It, all he's going to do by eating keto is he's going to make sure his bones and muscles are super strong and maybe even filled out a little more. And he's going to keep his body fat percentage very low, but he's not going to just keep losing weight. This is not some crazy weight loss hack. This is a proper human diet. It's going to move you to your ideal body weight, whether that's up or down. How much organ meat weekly <clears throat> Frank wants to know? You can eat organ meat every single day of the week if you love it and want it or crave it. Or you can eat it once or twice a week just for maintenance. That's that's my current official guidelines. Once or twice a week, and it can be heart, liver, brain, kidney, uh, any organ. Uh, but the liver really is the, the super food nutrient of all. Uh, but heart's pretty darn good. Kidney, I've got some lamb kidney in the, the freezer that we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to do some research and try to figure out a way to cook it. Last time back at the old farmhouse, I tried to cook a full grown beef kidney and it stunk so bad. It was terrible. I couldn't even hardly take a bite, Maybe gag. but yeah. this is lamb kidney. It's supposed to be much milder and I'm going to look for an actual recipe, except just putting it in the skillet and frying it and see what we can come up with. Tammy, this is a good question. I think a lot of you have this question. Is there any point where I need to cut <clears throat> back on fat? Once I am adapted to lose weight. No. Uh, anybody out there who says, oh, you can't eat fat and burn fat. They basically still believe that in the, in the calories in calories out model, that your body is run by hormones. And when you're eating enough fat, that tells your body's hormones, hey, we're in times of plenty. We don't have to store all this excess fat. A lot of people burn more fat when they eat more fat. It does. It's not just fat for fat. Like eating fat goes to my butt, and I now have fat because I ate fat. That's that's kindergarten thinking. That's not true. That's not how the human physiology works. And I know there's some big, you know, influencers out there saying that, but it's silly, really, if you understand human physiology. But also, there is no reason to go out of your way. To hit a fat macro also that some true. random calculator told you you needed to hit. Also true. Okay? That's unnecessary. Yep. Eat your fat. If it's attached to meat, season your meat in fat. Cook your meat in fat. Add butter to your eggs. That sort of thing. But there's no reason to go eat seven fat bombs because you didn't hit a fat macro that yep. some All, calculator agree. spewed out yep. to you. Okay? Yep, yep, yep. That is not necessary. I totally agree. Afro Abomination says boil the kidney and grind it with untrimmed brisket 50-50. Okay. Yeah, hundred percent. A bunch of people said boil it, Doctor Barry. Okay, so but I, I like the the grinding it with uh, brisket or hamburger. That's a good idea. Then I wouldn't even know it was there. What a Afro abomination! Crown of curls says I'm thirty eight. Oh, so you're just a little bit older than me. Uh, scale victory and back to my high school weight after two kids. Third kid, if you count my husband. <laughs> no, give some Love thumbs you. to Crown of Curls. That is a huge victory. That is beautiful. Cheryl, thank you so much. Candace, uh, ED stands for eating disorder. Oh, sorry, yeah, Candace. Okay, okay. Sorry. yep. Yes. Yeah, and so, Candace, I just posted a video on my YouTube channel, this channel, about intuitive eating. I think that video might help you uh, understand the proper human diet and intuitive eating in, re in respect to a proper human diet. Four day fasting, Candace, I don't think is necessary mm -hmm. for you. Not nope. at all. Nope. Nope. Um, going that long. Nope. Not now. Not, not now. necessary. Nope. Just, re I really want you, like, yeah. Dr. Barry's great. Okay. 
Dr. Georgia Eat is going to be you just yep. go and binge yep. all of she has a blog. She has yep. she's yep. starting a YouTube yep. channel soon. So she's gonna she have writes articles channel. for psychology today all the time. She's very intelligent and she is all over the mental health issues. You've got to follow Georgia Eed, E D E. Yep. Great doctor. Monica, thank you, Monica. All right, we're gonna take one more question. Let's see. And then I'm going to tell you how, if you've got more questions for me and I didn't get to it tonight, I'm going to give you the inside scoop on how to get all your questions answered by me personally. Blank Slate wants to know, how do you guys herb and spice your meat like steak? Do you use marinades? So we use uh, Redmond's Real Salt all the time. And they've got like 20 different herb blends that are still zero carb or super low carb organic and organic and great ingredients. So we love everything from Redmond's real salt. Uh, and then sometimes what else I do use, use primal kitchen yeah, to marinate sometimes. Primal sometimes. Kitchen. Yep. Uh, and then also what is, Oh my gosh, we got a spammer. Come on, dude. Come on. Why? Really? That's usually about it. Okay. Now it's locked up. I can't do it. You have to do it on your end. Uh, yeah, so that's normally what we salt and pepper, and then the seasonings from Redmond's. And then if I'm trying to marinate chicken or do something like more like that, primal kitchen seasonings, they're usually really good. But you got to check the back of it because some of them are pretty high carb still. So make sure you're reading labels, even if it's a good brand. Mm -hmm. I want to say you can trust them, but you can't. Okay, you can't trust anyone. You got to check the labels. Well, Paola's got a, a recipe for kidney. Send it to me, Paola. I need it because I don't want to. I don't want to mess this she kidney would. up. Yeah, I don't want to mess it up. All right, those of you who have voted for us already on the ketogenic awards, thank you. If you haven't done that yet, you can just Google ketogenic yep. awards, channel of the year, influencer of the year. <laughs> Boom. I, I don't know That's how I right. feel about that, but now, I want to. It's, it's awesome. Now, if you've got questions that didn't get answered tonight, there's another way that you can do it. And you actually have one-on-one -on -one access to me. It's through patreon.com. We have a private protected community there. Uh, I answer questions every day from patrons. Nisha and I have two or three additional live Q&As inside of Patreon every single week, uh, Tuesday evening, Wednesday morning. And then I do a private with the Vital Break patrons on Wednesday evening, and we might even add another live Q and A. But we've instead of having three thousand people watching, we've got under under two hundred watching, and so I'm we're often able to answer every single question in deep detail. You can also message him on, and there you too. can message me on there too, and I'll answer your message. Patreon.com. There's a link in the show notes. Become part of the tribe and get all your questions answered. We also have fun, like and a it's lot fun of too. Fun. Yeah, it's also fun. I post stuff in Patreon that I don't post anywhere else in the world. There's a video on there right now that I made that Nisha vetoed. She's like, uh-uh, you're not posting it on YouTube. And so I posted it for the patrons and said, what do you guys think? And they uniformly agreed with Nisha that I couldn't post it, but it's still on Patreon. So that's where we're at if you're looking for us. We will be here next week. If you don't want to join us on Patreon, every Monday, good Lord willing in the creek, don't 7 p.m., Central Standard, Standard Time. Time. You got to say it all. Right? Subscribe, like, share the love. We'll Hit see you thumb. next week. Yeah. Thanks so much, guys, for joining us. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>